Hello. For a long time, you've been using various measuring tools to measure things like height or length or volume or mass. In this unit, we're going to look at evaluating the tools you use to do those measurements. We're not as much interested in measuring things as we are interested in evaluating if the tool itself is a good choice. Now, one thing to start off with, very often, the tool that is used to measure something is because the shape of the tool works well. A flexible measuring tape is good if you're trying to measure yourself for clothing. Whereas a measuring tape for construction is a little bit different shape, extends a long distance, 20 or 30 feet, and is easy to carry. There are a couple of new terms we need to know when talking about evaluating measuring tools. The accuracy of a tool evaluates if the tool is correct. Is my meter stick actually a meter? Does my bathroom scale actually weigh me two pounds or is it not quite a pound? Is that number incorrect? Does the odometer on my car give me the correct distance or is the odometer itself incorrect? Accuracy is evaluating, is the measuring tool true or correct? If my meter stick warps or breaks, it is no longer a meter and it is inaccurate. Precision is looking at how much do the ticks go up by? What is the smallest change in length or mass that I could measure? Uncertainty talks about how far out might my measurement be? If I measure something and the weight is 10 pounds, well, how far off is that measurement? Depending on the measuring tool, it might be off by a little bit or it might be off by a great deal. The tolerance is used when we are constructing something or building something. The precision and uncertainty of our measuring tools and whatever measuring or construction technique or building technique we use will give us a range of values. So when I'm building something, for example, shelves, it can't be too big or too small. That tolerance gives us the range of acceptable values for something. Let's look at a couple of examples here. This is a digital speedometer. In this case, you can see that it is measuring 55 miles an hour. If I were to speed up a little bit, just a little bit, the next increment would say probably 56 miles per hour. There are no decimal places here. This only measures to the nearest mile an hour, which would be the precision of this tool. This may be enough precision for what I'm wanting to do. I'm driving down the highway, the nearest mile an hour is plenty. I don't need to be more precise than that. Here's another example from a car. This odometer is measuring to the nearest mile. It's 119,591 miles. This is not particularly precise. The odometer would not be a good tool to use in order to measure the length of a pen or the distance between two shelves. But the odometer is a good tool to use in order to measure the distance between cities or how far a car has traveled. I don't need to be particularly precise. An odometer might be too precise in order to measure the distance between planets. I don't need to know the distance from here to Mars to the nearest mile because it's a very long distance to the nearest million miles is probably close enough. This is a vernier caliper. This is a digital one, which are really nice to work with. And you can tell this one goes to 0.97 millimeters in this measurement. So it measures to the nearest hundredth of a millimeter. This is a very precise tool. Measuring to a hundredth of a millimeter is a very small distance. And this might be the correct tool to use if you're trying to measure something very precisely. Hopefully this is also accurate. But this measuring tool might be incorrect and precise. You can have a tool that is accurate but not precise. You can also have a tool that is precise but not accurate. Those are important distinctions. Here's another example. On the back of my kitchen scale, I took a picture of this sticker. 
This actually has the precision of this scale written right on the sticker right there. So using this kitchen scale, I can measure to the nearest one gram or the nearest 0 0.05 ounces. So I can measure out 105 grams of flour in order to make pasta, and this is a great choice for that. However, if I'm trying to measure, say, a hundredth of a gram to make paint and mix colors correctly, for example, this would not be the correct scale for that. This is a great scale for the kitchen. This is not a good scale for a chemistry classroom. We're going to take a look at accuracy, precision, uncertainty, and tolerance in the next couple of videos. I hope you keep, stay tuned. Have a great day.